Welcome back to my longest project ever. I'm currently in the middle of reconstructing the cab of this very rusty 1980 Toyota long bed. And the last couple episodes, I pulled off the rusty inner fender and uh, damaged front support and cleaned up the cab, repaired some minor issues, replaced the battery tray. And over here, I have the nicer front support and inner fender from the 1980 Southern parts truck. So today, I'm going to be welding these onto the cab of the Ohio 1980 long bed. And once this cab is finally back together in one solid piece, I can remove it from this nasty rusty frame and over to the southern frame that I refinished in a previous video. And who knows, maybe one day I'll get this thing back on the road. So I already have these two panels pretty much cleaned up. This one is down to bare steel. And this one I left painted because the paint was in pretty good shape. I did clean off some of the rusty areas in the back. And of course I cleaned off all the areas where it'll be mounting to this inner fender. So the first thing I'm gonna do is set these up on here just to make sure the fitment is pretty close because who knows, this truck was in an accident at some point and I wanna make sure that coming from a straight solid truck isn't gonna sit wrong on a truck that may have been tweaked at some point. Now, I didn't expect this to go together in the first try like some kind of kid's puzzle, but uh, yeah, I got some work to do over here. So I'm pushing this back as far as it's gonna go, and you can see these two pieces of metal have very little in common when it comes to contour. So I'm gonna have to re-massage the top edge of this fender to uh, fit this cowl here. And same with down here, down here, down here. This all got sort of mangled when I was pulling it apart from the old truck. So I'll start back here and work my way forward and maybe having this correct will make this fit better. Hey, that's looking pretty good from about 10 feet away. So let's start with the worst area. This whole thing needs to move back a little more. Now this, there's about a finger gap here, and there's also a gap on the other side, but it's not quite as big. So this isn't as bad as it looks, but it does need to come back a little bit more, and I'm not sure what's holding that up. There's a gap all the way down on the inside. Uh, this is clearing right here. So something's holding up, I'll figure that out. But yeah, there's a space over here too, so this whole area needs to come back a little bit. And then up here, this looks pretty good. I'm happy with this. This is all lining up real nice because they are from the exact same truck. This is looking good inside here. I am gonna have to go inside here and clean this up a little bit. It's kind of bent up uh, just from where I moved it. I've got some spot weld holes to clean up and whatnot. But I'm happy with this corner. Then we get over here and I've got this clamped in place. And if I release this, it will definitely move out a couple inches. And this wants to go down. You can see it's not lining up at all. So this one's gonna be the fun one as well. And I've got a mess down in here where the spot welds uh, had a hard time coming apart and the metal was just so weak that it kind of ripped it. So I'm gonna take all this back off and I'll probably just start with cleaning this up in here and hopefully that'll help the fitment. I started here on the lower front of the passenger side inner fender. First, I flattened it back out with vice grips and a hammer just to see if it could be salvaged. And it could not. In addition to the tears, the metal was just too thin from years of rust. I decided I'd better reconstruct it. So I started by making a cardboard template from the somewhat nicer driver side. And then traced the cardboard template onto some scrap sheet metal. Cleaned up the edges on the bench grinder. Then I gave the repair area a quick cleaning with the FLC 200 to remove all of the paint, primer, and undercoating. 
and cleaned all the junk off my scrap metal repair panel as well. And cut out all the bad area with some aviation snips. And resorted to the cutoff wheel after the snips weren't getting the job done. And cleaned up the cut edge with the four and a half inch grinder. Who would have thought I would need all these tools for such a small repair area? But here's how it looks. I'm happy with it. I got it clamped in place. And you can see this follows the original body line. Now I clamped it onto the inner fender well side. So I'm gonna have to weld it along this seam. And then I'm gonna go ahead and weld on the inside along this seam as well, just to make sure it's solid and there's no chances for water to get in there and cause any rust. I started with a few tacks. I'm actually proud of those. I might be gonna grind those down. I am gonna hit it with the wire wheel though, just to get all the burnt crust off. Next, I reassembled the front support to see if that repair helped at all with the poor fitment. I'm getting somewhere. It looks good from five feet away now. So this side's looking pretty good. Look at that. Good fitment there. And you can actually see where this was sitting before by the outline of uh, the old paint there. So I've got a little bit of work to do right here. But uh, overall, I'm happy with this. And I decided not to cut this out and rebuild this part because like I said, these holes line up exactly where I need them to. I'd rather have some extra welding to do than kind of be in the dark on both sides because the other side isn't great. Let's go check it out. So you saw me hitting uh, this piece right here with a board and a hammer to try and close this gap and it's a little better, but still not great. Notice here, all these spot welds, they're not lining up with the inside lip of this front inner fender right here. So that's a problem. And then there's that. I can't get that gap to close. I don't know what's going on there. And uh, down here, again, got a big gap. Shouldn't be that big at all. It's almost as if this whole inner fender somehow has sort of sunken down the front. But uh, I'm gonna figure this out off camera so you guys don't see me scratching my head for 20 minutes and I'll let you know what I figure out. So checking out the original front end that I cut off, you can see it was dented pretty good right there. But I didn't realize how bad it was until I stood over it. And you can see it sticks out a lot farther down there than it does over here. Like this whole thing is sort of twisted and the front moves kind of forward like this. And this part sort of pushed in. So the, the truck is definitely not square. And if you look at this, this does angle up a lot higher to meet the angle of that inner fender. And this side over here is a lot more flat. So this explains why things are not lining up. All right, after much hammering, twisting, bending, I've got this thing to a somewhat acceptable point um, within, I'd say, an eighth inch or less on all sides. So you can see I've got the jack here holding up a one by four, sort of pushing this inner fender up. And look at that gap, I'm happy with that. Now, you may see here on the inside, a lot of these spot welds are still off. So I'm just gonna have to massage this as I go and tack these in because these are still not quite lining up. You can see light right there. But I can have some leverage there by pulling up and down on this battery tray and that should help things get lined up just enough. I mean, it looks good with the fenders on it before so I'm sure I can get it looking good again once all these body panels are back on covering this up. This corner, we're great over here. Back here, I did get this looking a lot better after some hammering and massaging, and that's lining up really nice. This inner fender down here still has a decent gap. Not sure what I'm gonna do about that yet, 
I can only hammer this in so far before I just start touching the top and the bottom is still pulled away. What I'm probably gonna end up doing is going on the inside of the firewall and hammering it out because if you remember, this metal is not that thick. So I should be able to massage that to meet this fender. And everything here will line up okay because I've got some room to sort of get this in the right place as I'm going along since it was originally connected together. But now that I have this all together and lined up, I need to pull it back apart because I need to go through and spray some weld through coating um, everywhere where I'm gonna be uh, using a plug weld where there was once a spot weld. Next, I cleaned all the bare metal with some brake cleaner. And applied the weld through primer. Now once I have this inner fender welded in place, I will no longer have access to this area. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit this with a little bit of self etching primer. And do the same in here, just not in the line where I'm going to be welding. And once this is all together and painted, I can always spray in here with some fluid film through this access panel and get this thing good and coated. And the fluid film is nice because it'll stay kind of oily over time to protect the surface and then creep into all these little tiny gaps and spaces or have spot wells and sheet metal overlapping. And that'll help prevent rust. And now that primer is cured, so I'm gonna go over with a little bit of uh, leftover paint I have from another project. Uh, it's just gonna be some white uh, engine enamel. There's a tiny bit left in this can, so we'll go ahead and use this up. It doesn't need to look pretty because it's gonna be hidden. And we'll do the same over here. Now the paint is dry and I just have to get this fender fitting back on here as good as it was before and throw a few tack welds on there to get it in place. I'm in a good spot here and my plan is to start welding up here just a couple tacks just to secure it in place and uh, work my way forward. Get all these spot welds lined up and flush. It's kind of a challenge. Unless you have a bunch of these or someone to hold things together for you. Here we go. That's good. And will it hold? Yes. All right, the top is secure. I'm gonna go down here onto the inside and uh, I'm gonna do a plug weld on uh, one of these guys to get this part secure. And then once I'm welded in here and down there on the inside, I should be able to push this inside of the uh, fender down 
and over a little bit from the inside to get these wells lined up exactly where they were before. You can see right now they're about an eighth inch off. Now for the passenger side. I uh, went ahead and got this back positioned how I like it. It's actually pretty tight compared to before. I'm a little bit off down here though. So I'm gonna start up here with the fender and the hood and everything has an important alignment up here. And then I'll work my way down here and massage this as I need to in order to get uh, these spot welds to line up because as you can see, they're not even close. This whole lip is up actually into the headlight opening. So step one right here. Now, this corner's good. I need to start pushing this inner fender down here. You can see I'm only halfway onto the sheet metal, but if I really push this down, I can get it lined up. Remember, I'm working with an area that was previously pushed inward. So this inner fender doesn't quite come out to where it should to meet the front support from the parts truck. I mean, the body panel is lined up okay the way it was before. So I'm thinking there's enough play and adjustment in there to get it looking good again. Got a little bit of a gap right here. I'd like to close more if I can. I think I'll get one of these spot welds in first. This one right here, because it's the tightest, and then work my way up from there. This is the most this thing's looked like a truck for quite a while now, and unfortunately, the gaps are a little large, especially right here between the hood and the fender. It's like that on both sides. It's larger as it comes to the front. A little bit smaller at the very end. I mean, I'm not expecting Mercedes-Benz quality panel fitment here, but uh, I'm gonna see what I can do to make this better. So I just went inside and looked at some photos and videos from before I even got the truck in here and started to disassemble it. And it always had horrible panel gap. And this is actually better than it used to be. And knee be, I could always uh, enlarge the holes and the fenders a little bit to get them moved in a tiny bit more. Of course, I'm uh, probably gonna end up going with some four-wheel drive fenders anyways, because I like the wider fender flares. So I'm just gonna leave this the way it is for now and I'm happy with this. Then I removed the hood and fenders one more time so I could start welding everything in place. I used a combination of the hammer and vice grips to align the panels and bring them closer together as I was ready to weld them in place. Passenger side is all welded in, and I was taking a close look at the driver's side before I get started, and I goofed. So uh, this inner fender here, this should be up over this. And there's, because I've already got this tacked in in a few spots, there's no room to pull this back out and pull it over. And rather than 
re-drill out the welds I've already done and risk changing the alignment that I have on this whole setup here. What I'm gonna do is use a hacksaw because it's the only thing that'll fit. Right down in here and just cut this up a little ways. And at least that way, if I cut up maybe, you know, half an inch or so, I can bend this tab out and then at least get these two pieces flush. Now it was finally time to permanently attach the new panels to the old cab by welding plug welds everywhere I had drilled a hole to remove the original spot welds. The metal is much easier to tap with the hammer and form it to the body once the metal is already hot from the previous adjacent plug weld. I went ahead and tossed a welding blanket over the windshield just to be sure it doesn't get pitted from any of the hot sparks. I'm using a dull, fat chisel to form these recessed areas that are too small for the hammer to fit into. I threw a weld down the seam where the two pieces overlapped for some extra strength. The idea behind tapping the top piece with a hammer first is to get it as flush as possible with the back piece so there is minimal gap between them before welding. This means I'll have to apply less seam sealer later on. Just the heat alone from the surrounding welds is enough to make the top layer expand and lift up from the back piece. So I had to keep tapping this edge back down to be flush with the firewall. Next, I hit all the welds with the grinder to make them flush with the surface. I couldn't reach these with the grinder, so I smoothed them down with the mini belt sander. They looked great after that, so I smoothed all the welds with the mini belt sander. So here's how it looks, and I really love the finish that that mini belt sander gives all these welds. So the next step for this engine bay is gonna be paint. And I do need to apply some seam sealer and all these uh, seams here along the front. Same with this side over here. And then I have some more work to do on the firewall to get that ready. So I'll be showing how to prep and paint this engine bay in the next video. Thanks for watching.